Hello YouTube! My name is Nero, and welcome back to some more Game Dev Tycoon, and just like every episode, it's gonna let us know that Nero City was our best game ever. One day, we're gonna go ahead and beat that game. At least, I hope so. I read in the comments, this is, I don't even know if this is true, or if this is accurate in the slightest, but I figure it's one of the things that we will try just to learn, because I don't really plan on ever really, you know, stopping this uh, series anytime soon. We're gonna make the Nero Box 3 to start off this episode. And what did we do? It's we got the blue one, right? Yeah, the blue one. Call the insurance all the way up. I read that the reason that the Nero Box 2 was taken off the market was because we started the Nero Box 3, then got rid of it. All right, so we're gonna try that out. Uh, hopefully, this won't delete our PC. We'll have to see about that. Let's do this. Um, we want three graphics, V7, advanced stereoscopic 3D. We want online play rather than multiplayer because multiplayer is just silly compared to online play. Multiplayer is like co-op, I guess. And I don't even know if you why you necessarily have to choose between the two, but whatever. Uh, sound looks like everything's good. There's not really a ton of options uh, when putting together a console as compared to putting together a PC. Seems the market has normalized again with no particularly strong trends at the moment, and that stinks. Wait, if we if we hurry, go over. Oh, it, all right. And new game. <laughs> if we hurry, our new game can make E3. So what game shall we make? I'm looking at the awesome list of things. Right now, I like this idea overall. I'm going to combine two different suggestions into one game. We're going to make Nerthstone, which is basically going to be Hearthstone, right? But we're going to make it really cheap. There's no way to make a free-to-play game. There's just like no way to do so. So we're gonna go ahead and make a card game, but we're gonna make it like a dollar. Like we're gonna make this as cheap as humanly possible, and we're gonna see if anything cool or awesome comes from it. Yeah, how's that sound? I think that'd be pretty cool. We're gonna make E for everyone, because I think Hearthstone's E for everyone. I mean, how graphic can a card game be? Uh, let's release this some bitch for the Neroware and the PC. I don't want to put it on like one of the mobile devices or stuff like that, because then you have to make it like a medium game. I want it to be a big game even though a triple a card game doesn't make a whole lot of sense <sighs> don't know whatever we're gonna put this on the xbox we're gonna try this out i don't know hearthstone of course not the biggest me you know, yeah i only know if you consider would you consider hearthstone to be a triple a game i don't you know it's made by blizzard which is of course a giant thing but like when I think of AAA, I think of like, well, then again, it's probably got as many downloads as like a big game like Call of Duty. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you consider to be a AAA game. All right, so what goes into a card game strategy? I imagine the gameplay is the number one. The story and quest gets a card game is nothing. And then the engine would be up next. That's how I would guess this gameplay. If, if gameplay is our most important, we want our best uh, design guy, which is actually Mr. Paul Reed. Then we shall put our uh, we'll put a nice backup guy like me. We'll put my guy there. There we go. Uh, let's lift this up one more. Oh, oh, oh. Down. There we go. 100% for both player, which is me, and Paul Reed. There we got two design guys uh, working on the engine as well as the gameplay. Let's make sure we got our things here. Although I think these things save. Yeah, it looks like we got everything we need to know. Okay. Perfect. Muy perfecto. I think we actually made a Hearthstone game a while back, but you know, it wasn't actually a card game. I think we just made like a like a fantasy strategy game and called it Hearthstone because we didn't have the card game. Uh, topic because that came with the expansion pack mod thing add-on that I have which of course is linked in the description to that if you guys want to go check that out and download it for yourself it allows you to have tons of different topics as well as a bunch of cool stuff and 5,607,376 people showed up to check us out at E3 this year which is of course going to give us some of the hype and let's go over here to the research and development lab and set the game price I forgot to do that almost cheap as possible one dollar is how much this game is going to cost. Anyone can play. Anyone can play. Basically, you're going to make it a free-to-play game. I wish there was a way uh, just, just to try it out. And I bet you if there's a game dev too, that they might add something of this nature. What if there's a way to add microtransactions? And maybe even if you go even deeper with it, a way to set the price of different kinds of microtransactions. And like, okay, here's our free-to-play game. But here is, you know, a whole set of microtransactions. And see how it could work. You know, if you put in like a pay-to-win system or if you put just a purely cosmetic stuff or... Uh, if it's like kind of like Hearthstone where it's just like packs of cards and it's all random as to what you can get just like a real life card game but Who knows? Who knows? I don't know, but that could be pretty interesting uh, Hi, this is Arnie Kunkel of Electric Games. Scott Ward Neropolis is working on a new game which only shares some information on it 
Many of our readers are curious about what decisions go into making a video game and how companies prioritize development areas. Your new game is a card game strategy game, and can you tell us whether or not uh, such a game would usually receive a focus of stories and quests or on sound? I'm gonna say sound. If they say a story and quest, I'm gonna be quite upset because we put nothing in the story and quest, and that could be pretty bad. Let's see here. In the interview place, that sounds of particular importance to such a game, and it seems that other industry professionals agree. All right, so sound is pretty important. I'm glad that they let us know that. We know to put a lot into sound, which we will do. I mean, what would Hearthstone be without the Leroy Jenkins? Actually, a lot of the things they do in that game are actually funny. Um, I'm trying to think of all the different kinds of people. Now, what do we put into here? Artificial intelligence? I think the AI in a card game is probably the most important... No, because, well, in a card game, if you're facing a computer, of course, the AI is a big part, but mostly in Hearthstone, people play people, which means the artificial intelligence, there is none. Huh. Well, I guess there is some, art, art, some artificial intelligence, like the, the random number generators and stuff. Would that be considered AI? Well, we, according to this, dialogue's not important at all, so I'm going to say AI followed by level design. I mean, if you think of Hearthstone, the level design is not exactly that great. You know, I mean, it's fun, it's interactive a bit, but is it mind-blowing? No. Uh, I guess I'm gonna go with that. AI, I'm assume, is a tech thing, so we're gonna put Wyatt there, then we'll put our level design, level design. Maybe more of a design thing, I guess. I don't know. We'll put Clinton there, whatever. We'll throw Clinton in there. Then we'll have Clinton working on different kinds of stuff. Actually, no, I'm a, I have a feeling that the, wait, well, no, the final thing is sound, which is a tech thing, which is important. Yes, so we're gonna, wait, Clinton, is Clinton, no, we need Jonathan Joseph for that. Ah, all right. So next, next up is sound. All right, and they, we just learned that sound is of particular importance to the game, right? And I think sound is a tech-based thing, so I want to save our best tech-based person, or at least our second best tech-based person for the next uh, development stage. Which I was looking, I'm like, wait, is that Clinton Harris? And I was like swapping people around. I'm like, oh wait, Jonathan Joseph at 523 is our next best tech person behind Wyatt Potter, who's working on this stage. So that was a, that was the whole process right there. I hate like sometimes that feels like when I play this game. I'll go like I'll make a bunch of decisions, but not like, maybe explain why I made such decisions, and I think that is not exactly good. So I'd rather explain what I was thinking or what I was trying to do rather than just going ah da, 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 click and then just yeah you know, people go what what just happened? <laughs> yeah, you know? that that was my thought process behind it. We just learned the sound is of particular importance to a card game strategy game. I had no idea that was the case, but apparently it is, and we will see about that. Hopefully it turns out. I'm trying to remember what the other what the other criteria in the third stage of development are, and how... I know sound, we know sounds important, but what are the other ones? I can't remember the other topics involved, <laughs> to be honest, but our hype. You know, with the marketing campaign plus E3, I'm kind of disappointed by the amount of hype we have right now. Actually, no, that's actually quite a bit of hype, because we're just now starting a third stage. Graphics and world design. Graphics aren't important, but apparently sound is? Hmm, hmm, hmm. It's a card game. How good could world design be? I'm going to say it's graphics. Graphics followed by sound is how I'm going to run this. Uh, could that be wrong? Probably, because that's how my life works. Let's see here. Graphics. It's, of course, a tech thing, so we're going to throw Irene in there. There we go. Manuel, you're not doing nothing. You never do anything. He's the lowest level in, like, everything. Like, he's, he's like, the lowest in every category for the most part. You know, he's just... Manuel doesn't help out a whole lot. We could fire him, but, you know, he's been with the company for, like, 100 years, so I don't want to just get rid of him. That's it. Why is there a negative on graphics? You think the graphics would be very important in a card game, because what else is there? World design. Would world design be a thing? You know what? You know what? You know what? You know what, man? Well, you're going to work on something. There. We're just going to throw that up a little bit. I don't know. Maybe, maybe a little... There. I'm, whatever, I'm just going away with it. I don't know. I decided to up them all because I really have no idea as to what is important in that final stage of development. And I don't want to risk putting too much into one thing or not putting enough into something else. You know, world design, for whatever reason, whether ran whatever random reason, was of somehow importance, uh, somehow integral to our card game strategy game, then I don't, I don't want to risk it. I don't want to risk it. I'm going to put a little bit in there, whatever. We'll see if it works out. And yeah, at first I was kind of worried about the hype. Look at our hype now. It's, you know, by far not the most we've ever had, but it's doing all right. It's doing just fine. And it looks like we're actually getting pretty good in design and technology points, which is pretty awesome, I think. 
I think, hope we had 217 pugs. Yeah, we're definitely going to hit 1,000 in tech. Wonder if we'll be able to hit 1,000 in design once we rub all these bugs. We'll see. We shall see. 620 is a lot of hype. And hopefully it doesn't start diminishing by the time we can get rid of these damn bugs. Now here come all the design points, hopefully. That's right, more design points, see? Give us all the design points, try and get us up to 1,000, see? Yes, there we go. Oh, another E3! Awesome! Alright, so if this doesn't start diminishing, then we can get another E3 in. I'll be very, very happy. <laughs> but then again, the thing about doing another E3 is what's kind of the point we're selling this game for a dollar. We put, we put like, how much in? Like 10 million, 20 million, somewhere in there? Come on, E3, hurry up and show up, hurry up, E3. There we go. See, we're starting to lose our hype. How, we put millions of dollars into this game that we're selling it for a dollar a piece. <laughs> You know what? I'm hoping, my goal, my, my hypothesis, is that hopefully somehow in this uh, 5.65 million, 5 million people showed up this year, uh, my, my hope is that somehow this will translate into even better sales or something. Stop putting in fucking bugs. Jesus. There. It's so obnoxious all those can sit, like, sit there and continue. Like, more and more bugs, more and more bugs, more and more bugs, more and more bugs. And it's like, dude, I'm losing hype here and I can't put it in because you have to keep throwing in bugs. Level up our dialogue and our 3D graphics V7. Alright, first reviews. It's a $1 game. If you give me a bad review, <laughs> they should give us a 10 out of 10 just for the fact that the game's a dollar. And that we spent how many millions of dollars putting it together. It's the best damn card game out there. Strategic games work very well in BG. We got age cross board except for the seven from informed gamer. Jerks. All right, let's send you suckers on vacation. Cause everyone's so tired all the time. Oh wow! It's racked up a million for like look look how many. S I wonder if the sales are gonna go up by a lot because the game is so cheap. I wonder if that's part of it. We're three million in two weeks. This is way more than average, I think. And I love the look of that computer so much. It's really cool looking. Oh, um, yeah. Well, there's a big drop in sales right there, but now it's starting to go back up. I think it's anyway now. It's Nearbox Three to the world. Sure. Oh, you're right to it. The Nero Box 3 is going to be fancy. We got word that the Nero Stones racked up 5 million in sales in 5 weeks. Yeah. Neuropolis has announced that they are working on a new gaming console. The console is named Nero Box 3. is planned to be the successor to their earlier contender, the Neroware. Uh, oh, no. Why do I listen to people? Why do I listen to people in the comments? Why do I just not look this stuff up and just take them at their word? <sighs> think that's getting rid of the Neroware. If that's the case, I'd rather make the Neroware again. Hopefully it doesn't. Hopefully uh, we can have the PC and the Neroware. I don't know. If not, whatever. We'll make a new one. Because if you guys remember right, um, the Neroware PC itself didn't do too well. Like The reviews were actually kind of like, oh, we need to choose the best possible thing on all the things. Therefore, this is an inferior product compared to the other ones on the market. And it's like, dude, just because I picked like a Razer mouse instead of like some other one, you're, you're pissed. <laughs> Whatever. It's not selling ridiculously well. Post analysis release of Nerthstone is that card game strategy, good combination. Sounds quite important. Uh, strategy near where is okay. Uh, platform audience match everyone near where good. Man, we should focus our entire. Shut up. Sh shut up. Let's start working on a new game. Let's drown our sorrows. We're almost up to 100 games, crying out loud. Let's see here. Let's try something that is just really weird and I don't think I'm gonna do well. That sounds interesting to me. We're gonna make Nero's 101. Basically, if you ever heard of the game Wizards 101, it's based upon that, even though I don't know what, I never played it myself. So it's a AAA youth. Wait, I can just search. I love being able to search. Wizards, even though they misspelled wizards. Uh, it's gonna be a wizard strategy RPG. I have no idea how to make this game. 
We're gonna make for the near aware. Can near aware is cool. All right. Uh, strategy not very good. Strategy's decent. RPG pretty good. No. You know what? Wait, I can put them for the PC too. Near aware PC. There we go. Uh, next gen nears. All right. We're starting our development. How much money have we made? So much. There's, like, I can't wait for near or Northstone or Nearthstone or wherever you want to pronounce it. I can't wait for that to come off the market so we can see exactly how much money we lost. All, that. all right, so what would go into a Wizards strategy RPG game? So RPG, obviously, though, you're going to want uh, story and quest. You know, instead of just going for, like, the straight-up, like, goofy 100% thing, I'm going to try and tinker with different things trinker with different things and hopefully it's gonna end up working out so we're gonna i'm just gonna, I'm gonna be throwing stuff around here it's gonna not make any sense you know what it's gonna be all right it's gonna be good it's gonna be good so we're gonna throw story and quest gameplay um ah, balls. <laughs> now i don't know what i'm doing all right let's throw me here i'd be 109 percent if that were to happen so we throw manuel who's just bad at everything over here he works on that a little bit. There we go. We've got all of these things together. I don't know what which is which we're supposed to be going for really. So I'm going with everything instead of going for what we usually do, where, where we try and we we 100% five different people out of the six. Instead, I'm just gonna throw stuff around a bit, and we're gonna see. And uh, Northstone has recently racked up 10 million in sales. This game truly deserves to be called Triple A. Pretty awesome, pretty awesome, pretty awesome, pretty awesome. I'm wondering how much it's sold. I can't wait for it to go off the market. Yeah, we made $167,000 in sales right there that week. In this game, we're going to lose so much money off of it. Uh, I was hoping, like, maybe, like, a giant jump, like, there'd be, like, a giant spike in sales. And people wonder why, like, games are free, that are free-to-play, you know, with microtransactions and why microtransactions are in so many different games. If you want the price of a game to be lower, they're going to have to add microtransactions within the game to be able to make a profit. You know, a free-to-play game, I mean, we, we this is a $1 game. We're still not making crap. So, it's still, it, that's how that whole thing works. But Neuropolis is... Released their game console in the Box 3 today. The console seems to really push the limits of technology and is the most modern console to ever hit the shelves. Really? Looking at the features of the Box 3, it seems that the list is extensive, which is a good sign. It could lead to a wide variety of games becoming available. First test indicates that the Nearbox 3's build quality is excellent and will likely run for decades without issues. All in all, uh, we think this console will stir up the market and prove to be very successful. I'm liking all the, all the hype. Hype is pretty nice. That's a lot of hype around the console. Too bad you can't build hype around the console, but <laughs> whatever. All right, Northstone's off the market. It's. I guess I didn't think of it that way. Yeah, we're, we we really lose much money. Well, technically we're gonna lose money, but it sold eleven million four hundred thirty-eight thousand two hundred sixty-five dollars, and it generated eleven million four hundred thirty-eight thousand two hundred sixty-five dollars. Same dollar a piece. Uh, Alright, so now we can go up here real quick. I just want to check this out. Game history. Uh, overall, we lost $12.5 million on Hearthstone. It's not that great. Wow. Alright, and now we're in development stage 2. What do we have? What, what we got? Uh, dialogue we pretty big? Artificial intelligence pretty, pretty, be pretty big? I think all of these would be pretty big in a strategy RPG. So we're going to uh, kind of like the same thing we did the last time. I have a feeling people are going to go over 100%, but whatever. We're going to hopefully do this and do this well. Oh, AI. AI, I think, would be more of a tech-based thing. So we throw in Jonathan Joseph. And then level design is more of a design thing. So we throw in Manuel, who... Damn it, Manuel. Damn it. You and your 110%. Alright, so we throw in Manuel into the design. There we go. We're just going to start throwing people around here. Wait, artificial intelligence? No, we want why well, we, we want Wyatt Potter there to be there instead, said Jonathan Joseph, because Wyatt Potter is our best tech guy. There we go. This game is either going to be... Let's be honest, it's probably going to get a bunch of 7s and 8s. That's what every one of my games get. Like, I can't... Well, I mean, this is the first time that we're trying something different, so it might do considerably better or more probably considerably worse. Really depends on the game, I guess. But I don't know, we're trying something new here. I'm not sure if it's gonna work out well. Hopefully, it will. 
That'd be pretty nice. But either way, even if it doesn't work out, who cares? We got four billion dollars. All right, this is Jason Green from Gaming World. I got word Neural Plus working on a new game. Would you willing to share some information regarding your current game project and do an interview about it? Jason Green says, many of our readers are curious about what decisions go into making a video game and how companies prioritize development areas. Your new game is a Wizards strategy RPG game. That's a mouthful. And can you tell us whether such a game would receive more focus on level design or on the engine? I'm going to say level design, because I think that's what I put more into. Please be level design, please be level design. If it's engine, that could be bad things. We didn't put a whole, we put a bit into engine, but we didn't put a whole lot. You misspelled Neuropolis. All right, in the interview, player said that level design is of particular importance to such a game. It seems that other industry professionals agree. Thank goodness. <laughs> I was really hoping that I didn't bone myself by investing a lot into that engine. Or not investing a lot in the engine, excuse me. All right, it seems that the market's normalized. Perfect. That's right. Oh, am I stupid? Wait, game price. First and foremost, let's not make the game a dollar. I don't know. How much was that game? I, I'm making 20 bucks. Making 20 bucks. I don't even know how much that game was. Boy, we're going to make 20 bucks. Uh, let's do a large booth. And we need also marketing campaign. This game needs more hype. That's what this game needs. It's more hype. Okay, world design. Which we just learned is of particular importance. Ah, so world design all the way up. Then these here. I think I might have screwed myself here because now it's going to get tricky into setting this all up. So we're going to put Clint Harris there. All right, graphics. That's a that's more of a design thing. We can throw Jonathan Joseph there. Irene's about to fall apart at the seams. Can my guy fit that much in? Oh, God, no. Okay, so we also work on sound a bit that takes the stress away. Irene, oh, no, John Joseph. <gasps> this is not working out well. I cannot. I'm trying to figure out a combination to somehow make it so whoever I put in here is not going to be 100. percent But I don't think that's going to be the case. The closest we can get is Jonathan Joseph, who will be at 119. The only way to fix that is to drop that d d graphics all the way down like that. You know? Well, this does this look really look that bad? Does it look horrible? Is it horrible? I, I, oh, the reason that it's like that because John Joseph's on two different things. Wait a minute, John Joseph can do this. But John Joseph's more of a tech person. Hmm. If What would happen if we were to throw Irene over there? Okay, so Irene's completely over encumbered. What if I were to throw me over there? And then drop down the sound. Yeah. Wait a minute. What if, I, what if we were to switch spots? Okay, okay, that doesn't work. You know what? It's probably not gonna work, but I'm going with this because this way no one's over 100. Um, yeah, I wish I was the one working on the graphics rather than Jonathan Joseph because my guy has way more design points, but we'll see. We'll see how it works. I don't know. That's confusing when you're doing games <laughs> that you've never made before. Strategy RPG. I don't even know what that means. Hopefully it turns out good. I'm not sure if it will. We'll have to see. All right, let's see how many people. We had 5.6 million last time, I think. I don't know, we'll have to see how many people showed up this particular year. I want to see if we can get up to 6 million. That'd be pretty neat. Okay, 5.7, so 5,702,376 people showed up. All right, number one booth. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We've never gotten the number one booth before. That's quite an honor. <laughs> Uh, is there anything I should be doing right now? I guess not, huh? I mean, marketing campaign's still happening. And we're just like burning through this. If you guys notice, like, the, the, this particular game, it feels like we're developing it really, really quickly. I don't know. Maybe it's based on my imagination. I don't know. All I know is I'm just looking at all these triple monitor setups. That's pretty. I got dual monitors. Triple just seems, eh. I don't, I don't use my second monitor that much anyway. I can't imagine what a third monitor would be like. Gearbox. Oh! I wanted to check that. We're, I guess we're going to have to wait until the game's being, finished being developed. I want to see if we can still have our PC, the Nearware, as well as our new console. If so, that'd be great. If not, I guess that's okay, but... Whatever. I, I prefer our new. I prefer the console and the PC. I think everyone would, but I really want to click finish. I really do. But you people, you 
People will not stop tinkering. And that's how we get bugs. Look at this! Three of them! Look at them! I was about to click finish and they throw in three bugs! That would have destroyed the game. Goodness. Alright, so we got over a thousand in both design as well as technology. Pretty nice. Leveled up uh, John Joseph as well as Clinton Harris, which means they're going to be getting erased. By the way, you see like they're making $133,000 and $114,000. That's not a year. That's a month. It's part of my monthly expenses. Yeah, these people are ridiculously wealthy. All right, first reviews of our new release game, Nier's 101, came in. Either going to be really bad or really good. Probably really bad. All right, a six. That's not a very good way to start it. Followed up by a six. Followed up by probably another six. All right, that's the sound of the devil right there. And another six. Could be better, quirky. Yeah. Yeah. Well, times like these make me say the game report would be pretty nice. Um, by the way, I want to see if we, I want to try developing a new game real quick just to see if we have. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I get for listening to people in the comments. We got it, that, and making the Nero Box 3 got rid of our awesome PC. <sighs> So I get for listening to people. So I get for listening to people. I mean, usually you guys are right. Then there's always some jackhole who doesn't know what he's talking about that makes a suggestion. Suggestion, and I assume that he's right because everyone's usually right. Then that jackhole, of course, is wrong. And then there we go. There we go. Then we don't have our don't have our PC anymore. No, did I hit fire? <laughs> All right, you got uh, word in your at Nears 101 as racked up a million sales. Cool. All right, he's trying to send people on vacation here, not fire them. But too many things keep popping up. All right, is everyone on vacation? No, oh, he's not. Here, have a vacation. There we are. Now it appears that everyone's on vacation. Everyone should be happy. And we have way more research points than we know what to do with. So I guess training has to do with research points, right? Isn't that a thing? Either way, I think we're ending off the episode here. Uh, right after we, of course, finish the game report and figure out exactly why that uh, Nier's 101 was not exactly that great. Hopefully we get some answers that people are dying to know. Probably because of my poor managing system. Alright, post-release analysis. Wizard strategy RPG <laughs> is an okay combination. World design is very important. Uh, strategy and box next is bad. Okay. Uh, platform audience match young and near aware is okay. And topic audience match young and wizards is young and wizards is bad. Really? Is wizards really for mature people? I figure it's the kind of thing that can kind of swing both ways, you know? I don't know. Either way, I hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of the Game Dev Tycoon playthrough. And if you did, please be sure to leave a rating where you guys feel the video deserves. And of course, leave your suggestions for different kinds of games in the comments. And I will try to make them. Depending on how cool they are, how original and creative they are, and whether or not they're in action games. We've made so many freaking action games, I kind of don't want to make it anymore for a while. I want to stick to trying out some new stuff. Uh, maybe not some super new stuff, because that game was kind of hard to put together, but other fun stuff. We'll, I don't know, we'll see. I want to get a 10 out of 10 game. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I want to do it. So, we're going to try that, hopefully, hopefully get that sometime, sometime soon. I guess, but uh, either way, I hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of the Game Dev Tycoon playthrough, and if you did, please be sure to leave a rating. Hope you guys all have a wonderful day.